Hey everybody out there, Rumbling Man, coming to you today from Florida. It is so good to be here on YouTube today. Um, I have to apologize to those who are my regular subscribers so far. I try to release videos every week if I can, but actually it is at this point in time as of right now, which is mid-January 2019. It's been one month since I last released a video, four weeks. So I apologize, and the truth is is that December... Um, the end of December, you know, around the 25th and everything with Christmas and then the beginning of January and uh, latching on to a new year. It's just a really busy time of year for me, you know, with worship leading uh, for Christmas services. And uh, also I've been playing a lot of gigs, which has kept me busy uh, doing some track production and things. Um, so I apologize for the delay on uh, getting a video together. I've just been a little short of time. Uh, you can help with that, however, and I will address uh, what things you can do to help this channel uh, at the end of the uh, video today. Before we move forward, I want to thank my buddy Ed Hauser. Um, Ed is a great guy and he's a studio musician out in Plant City, Florida. His studio is already going quite well and he's got a lot of guitars and a lot of basses and this guitar I'll be reviewing today is on loan from Ed. So you've seen the videos on YouTube, uh, various guys talking about the $99 guitar, the $99 electric Telecaster style guitar. What is it? It's a Cozart. Is it the only thing out there for $99? No, but it's one of the most talked about. Uh, the only issue is with reviewing it today is that usually when I do a review, I try to give you a lot of information about uh, what kind of woods were used. Um, you know, what is the hardware? What kind of uh, material is the hardware made of? Uh, what pickups were selected? Um, the stability of the electronics, uh, how heavy it is, what the measurements are. I try to address things like that, but today I cannot do so because I simply cannot find that information on the internet. To me, the Cozart brand is a bit of a mystery. Uh, you can look on uh, eBay and you'll see that you can find these Cozart guitars. You can find Telecaster models, you can find Thin Lines, Strat style models, um, all kinds of stuff, and people do uh, say good things about them on the online forums, and they're very nice looking instruments. But I've been unable to find a Cozart guitars source that actually gives you the information on the models uh, the company, etc. So in the comments, please feel free to let me know if you have any information on Cozart guitars or Cozart instruments or, uh, or any specs on this guitar or anything like that. Uh, please enlighten me and enlighten the viewers if, uh, if you're willing in the comments. I'd love to know more about them. Um, you can generally get a telly like this for right around 100 bucks. And in my opinion of the things out there for $100, you know, the $100 uh, sort of line of guitars out there, I would say that a Cozart is a really good thing to go with. And this is an SX Furion right here, uh, one with uh, Telecaster 72 Deluxe Feel. You know, this one ranging around $99 to $100, this one ranging around $120. This one it does feel like a, a little bit more of a quality instrument to me. Um, however, I like the sounds I can get with this one a lot better than the sounds I can get with this one. So you give some and take some, and ultimately, you know, when getting a budget guitar, unless you're getting it because you need a guitar and, and you need to get one on a really tight budget, you get them with the hopes of uh, making upgrades and the expectations of, of making upgrades and upgrading parts and turning it into a great playing instrument. So, what kind of body do we have? Dunno. Um, that looks like walnut to me, um, but it also doesn't at the same time, so don't know what kind of top that is. Um, very cool, however, the uh, back and sides of this one are, are just uh, solid black. Well, the top is this cool uh, wood grain. It's set up like a standard Fender Telecaster, Tele style guitar. Um, I like these style saddles. The ones on my Tele are brass, um, but these are the ones that you can adjust just like that. They're basically two strings to a saddle. I don't know right now what to call them. Um, whereas the ones on my Fenders uh, that have this particular bridge are adjustable with a screwdriver, I do see that these are gonna be an Allen wrench adjustment. Um, and there is a truss rod adjusted up here, and you've got these great barrel style string trees, which I really like. That's a lot better to me than having just a real cheap uh, string tree up there. Um, pickups, obviously you're going to have a bridge single coil, T-style, and then a uh, in the neck a single coil that many will refer to as a mini coil, um, a three-way switcher to give you the blend of the two and each of them on their own, a tone knob, and a volume knob. Another cool thing about how this guitar looks is it's got a matching headstock, bro. And the thing is, is that to me, you just can't beat a matching headstock. Matching headstocks are very, very, very cool. Um, they have a nice look to them. You know, part of my rave and rant about Lakeland basses and how sweet they are, man. Those, uh, those great looks on those basses and the matching headstocks and everything. Um, from what I can see on here, this says custom handmade underneath the Cozart logo. Um, other than that, 
I don't see any markings of identification on the guitar. I don't see a made in China or anything like that. I do know that before they got into making guitars, um, they were making fiddles, or that's what I say being from the South, but violins, cellos, uh, traditional instruments of that nature, and then got into guitars. And then from what I can see, there's a couple distributors in the United States, but it would appear though as if they're probably made and assembled overseas. That said, I don't know. Nonetheless, for 99 bucks, you know, right around a hundred dollar bill, you know, I, I mean, if, if you need a telly and, uh, and you want to go budget, I think this is actually pretty good for that price range. But I know that you're going to want to know how it sounds. So uh, let's plug up and I'll kind of give you some examples of some rhythm and lead uh, sounds that you can get with it. Um, not all of it will be like with a metronome and drum track and everything, so it'll just kind of be off the cuff me sitting here playing, but at least give you uh, some sample tones that you can get with this guitar. For the demo today, I'm running the guitar straight into a Line 6 Pod XT Live pedal, which is one of their older amp modeling units, but it's the one that happens to be sitting here right now. Uh, for cables, I am using two D'Addario Planet Waves cables, which are my favorite cables in the world. You need to check them out. You need to get them. Amazon link is in the description. For tuning in this video, I'm also using... Uh, this micro tuner by Diodario as well, and you can check that out in the description as well. You should get one of these. Fits in your pocket. Keep your guitars in tune. So, Rumble Man, how are the tones? You know, how are the uh, the neck, the bridge, the two combined? Um, you know what? Let's take a look real quick, and I'm going to record a little bit of just me playing some simple chords, and I'll go through each one of the pickups, and we'll see what we think of the sounds of this guitar. So, neck pickup. <laughs> That's a nice clean sparkly tone that we had with the neck there. Uh, now let's go to both pickups. Nice clean tone, and uh, now let's go with the bridge pickup. Now, if you're thinking about getting a budget Telecaster, then you may be thinking about playing some country music, and you may say, well, Rumblin' Man doesn't have that country twang sound to it. Well, with the amp simulation here, I've got the drive turned up, and I've got a little bit of the bright end turned up, and some of the other EQs dialed down a little bit. Um, this particular amp sound does kind of have uh, a little extra mid-range to it, so keep that in mind. Uh, but let's take a look real quick, and let's play a little bit of country style playing, and let's see if it could give you some of the tone that you're looking for. <laughs> And so some of the southern rock sound, some of the country sound, and then, you know, some of the lead licks in there, some of the, you know, the bends, like... I think you could probably get some of those sounds with this guitar. Telecasters and tele-style guitars, um, I truly believe that they cannot be underestimated for jazz guitar playing. Um, for jazz music, obviously, you know, a great arch top and, uh, you know, or some kind of hollow body with a neck humbucker or a neck P90 is always going to be a great bet, like even a Fender Jazzmaster, uh, you know, or something of that nature along the solid body context. However, Telecasters in this mini coil, single coil neck pickup have an excellent jazz tone. And when I first plugged this guitar up today, the first thing I thought was, yeah, good jazz stuff, good jazz sounds in there. So with just the neck pickup on and with the tone rolled off, not quite halfway, almost halfway, and uh, on the amp settings, we've got some reverb, little amp simulation, and uh, a bit of tremolo in there. Let's kind of see what kind of jazz guitar type sounds we could get. Okay, 
So that's kind of neat. And also, you know, some of that uh, that picking they do with all the intervals and stuff. You could just kind of hear it's got that low, uh, that yeah, not, I wouldn't even call it a low mid, just a low, uh, a low end range, kind of that cloudy sound that kind of hits home with jazz stuff really well. Let me uh, roll the tone knob completely off. And uh, also we will get rid of the tremolo and see how that sounds with this stuff. Okay, now that's a little too cloudy, so let's take it all the way up and tone wide open. So you can really see how you might be able to get some of those really nice jazz tones out of this. I think you could get blues tones as well uh, with the neck pickup, you know, throw in maybe a hair of reverb and do some of those, uh, some of those blues licks. I like it, but I feel like for blues stuff and for punchy lead playing, I feel like it's missing a little bit of attack. On the neck pickup, I mean, but it sounds nice. That's all on the neck pickup, and that was with the tone wide open. So the thing is, I actually would recommend this for jazz guitar. Maybe if you're a jazz guitar player and uh, you want to get, you know, maybe a secondary guitar that's a backup, I think this would be very nice for jazz music. For blues, though, I think it depends on what kind of blues music you're playing. If you're doing a lot of punchy blues leads, I don't know because I'm not feeling that punch that I usually feel with the Telecaster neck pickup. <laughs> However, it has a very nice, mellow, uh, chilled out, low range to it uh, that is definitely useful in some applications. Uh, praise and worship music is the style that I play most um, in church and also producing tracks and things like that. Um, if you are, say, uh, you know, in a worship band or a worship leader, maybe an acoustic player looking to transition to electric, test the water, see how it goes, maybe just looking for a good electric to have for some worship tracking, worship recording, or just a solid backup. I think maybe you can get some pretty good praise and worship tones out of this. For instance, uh, that was King of My Heart of the intro, but let's uh, check out a little bit of uh, Lion and the Lamb by Bethel. Definitely for some praise and worship style leads, it might be nice. What are those chords we're always playing, you know? Obviously, you're going to need slightly uh, better delay for some of that stuff than what you just heard. It may be a little less drive. I'm just kind of, um, I'm just kind of giving you an example there. Or even if you're wanting to do uh, praise and worship, it's like along the lines of uh, "We'll Come to the Altar" by Elevation, um, on more of a clean channel here. Let's hear that with some tremolo and uh, maybe with just the neck pickup. Now, in case you can't hear, I am hearing that this thing is a little bit out of tune right now.
So is it a good guitar for worship music? I'd say it is, yeah. And the next question you may have for me is, well, Rumblin' Man, you know, I'm trying to maybe transition to a T-style guitar from, say, you know, something with humbuckers and, and rock. How does it sound for rock? Can it be used for heavier music? Well, I personally think it can. I personally think you probably could get a really nice rock sound out of it. Let's try it real quick and see how it goes. So what do I think about it? So the pros to me are this. Number one, great tone, looks, and stability for the price. Now, if I were to put this next to, you know, my Fender Telecaster or even one of the better Squires, um, I wouldn't be saying that, but I'm talking about for the price here. Um, a well-known Telecaster that I'd most closely compare it to would be probably a Squire Affinity. Other pros are Tele-style tone at an affordable rate. The thing is, you know, I have a Fender American Telecaster that I'm very blessed to have. I've reviewed Mexican tellies and stuff on this channel. Um, you know, for 99 bucks, if you don't have a Telecaster guitar sound in your arsenal and you've got 99 bucks to spend and you just want that Tele kind of sound, well, you can do this. And if you don't like the pickups, uh, you can always upgrade them, switch them out at a later time. And a pro number three is that it's customizable. I mean, you know, you get customizability. Is that a word? I don't know. But you get the ability to customize a guitar and you get the guitar itself for only, you know, $99. So, you know, for... For a little more money invested over time, you can replace these tuners. Um, you know, you can replace this bridge um, if it needs to be replaced, the pickups, the electronics. Um, you know, you can make upgrades to this guitar. To me, there are some cons. Now, keep in mind, um, a couple of these cons are going to be legitimate issues. Others are going to be a matter of my opinion because the pros and cons section of a video is, is going to be largely my opinion. However, a con to me, con number one, now this is just to me, to me, okay? But to me, a con number one is the unfinished neck. Um, here's the thing, uh, and, and Ed will disagree with me on this, uh, Jeff will disagree with me on this, a lot of guys will disagree with me on this, but um, because a lot of guitar players love unfinished necks and how you can glide along on them, um, I personally just don't like unfinished necks. I think it, to me it just feels kind of cheap and splintery. You know, I like high gloss, I like gloss urethane. Um, I'm a big fan of semi-gloss or really thin coated gloss. I love satin urethane even. Uh, but unfinished necks that don't have any particular finish coated on them uh, are really not my thing. To me, it feels kind of cheap. Con number two to me is tuning stability. Um, during the making and filming of this video, I did have to tune a number of times. And as you saw, I didn't do all that much playing. I mean, I would you know, run a line, then hit record and run the line again. So I don't know what that could be. If your guitar is not staying in tune very well, it could be <laughs> a number of issues. It could be the tuners, and quite frankly, these tuners seem pretty cheap to me. I've seen worse, but they seem kind of cheap to me. Um, sometimes you can simply tighten the tuners with a screwdriver. It can very often be um, a nut issue, which um, there are solutions to that, like Big Ben's Nut Sauce, which I've done videos about, and there's a link in the description to uh, where you can get some of that for a very good price, very affordable. Um, sometimes you might want to upgrade the nut, upgrade maybe synthetic bone or plastic or graphite to actual bone. It could be the bridge. There could be a situation of the bridge saddles. Um, that affects tuning. Also, um, pickup height. The height of your pickup magnets can affect the tuning of your guitar because if they're up real high, real close to the strings, magnets, they're going to pull the strings down a little bit and that can and will affect your tuning. And these pickups are, are fairly high up. Um, so, I mean, there's a number of things that can affect tuning. But one thing to be aware of is you're probably going to have to get a setup. So what do you think of how it sounded? Let me know in the comments. Would love uh, to have your feedback. Um, overall, though there are pros and cons for me, you know what, if you like unfinished necks and you like upgrading guitars, then for $99 to $100, it's a no-brainer. Uh, roll with it, man, and grab you some parts too and uh, pimp it out, you know what I mean? A couple quick updates for you. Um, I'm going to NAMM in just a couple weeks. I'll be at the NAMM show, 2019 Winter NAMM. Um, I'm very excited about it. Obviously, you know, I live in Florida and California is uh, kind of, you know, 3,000 miles away or something of that nature. 
Um, but I'm very much looking forward to going. I'm hoping that while I'm there, I'll be able to release some content to you guys. Even if that's just me, you know, in there videoing things. Look at this, guys. Look what's going to come out. Whatever it is, um, I'm just stoked to get to go, uh, to get to network a bit and uh, talk about the channel with people and hopefully grow what we do here on the Rumble Man channel. That brings me to my final point, which is this. How can you help? The thing is, I want to release videos more often. I want to, I'd like to release at least one per week. Right now, I've got a lot of things clamoring for my attention, and I have to prioritize. And therefore, things that are going to come first are family life, and things that are going to come first are things that generate income, you know, uh, money-making projects. And Rumblin' Man, though I do think this organization, which is going very well, has the potential uh, to be a self-sustaining and then some project down the road, up until 2019, January of 19, it has not been a project that's even really paid for itself. That said, here are some ways you can help. You can buy the products using my Amazon affiliate links. I will get a very small commission, but if you're gonna buy from Amazon and you wanna click on one of my links to do it, then you know the more products you buy, the more my little bitty commissions will build up and that can help go toward supporting. Number two, you can donate financially, you can financially contribute. I generally don't, you know, really ask for that a lot. I generally don't really pressure people to do that a lot uh, because I don't like doing that and I wouldn't want somebody pressuring me unless it was something very, very, very serious. But I do have a Patreon where you can donate on a monthly basis. I do have a PayPal where you can make a one-time donation. And uh, what's going to happen is if you donate, uh, those donations are going to go toward making the needed upgrades to this channel etc and toward freeing up more time to get these videos to you and also uh, just ensuring that I can continue to bring you good fresh content. Another thing is you can like me on Facebook and invite your friends to like me on Facebook. I post on Facebook more often than I post on YouTube because I repost my YouTube videos to Facebook and I also post extra things you know maybe pictures from gigs I'm playing things like that throughout the week sometimes and I'd love to have you as one of my Facebook friends. And the least you can do, but it's also really helpful and great, is if you'll give me a thumbs up button on this video, and if you'll subscribe to my channel. Um, I have gotten enough viewers to where um, there's some success moving forward, and I've had a bless the blessing to work with uh, retailers, uh, friends like Ed, and I've also worked with gear companies to bring you great videos, and there seems to be promise of these things continuing to happen. So please, be one of my subscribers, and morally support the channel, and I will be so grateful to you. As always, God bless you guys. Thank you for watching this video and checking out the demo today. Thank you also for hearing my talk about the channel and things like that uh, in the comments. I'd love to hear your feedback on Cozart guitars.